The standard way to access Lexis Advance is with a unique user ID and password. The first thing you will notice is this very prominent red search box, which is the recommended starting point for research. From here, you can type in search terms using natural language or Boolean, or if you prefer to browse a specific publication, just start typing the publication name into the box and then click on the Table of Contents link that appears next to the publication in the drop-down suggestions list. The more you use the home page, the more it will become your personalized research workspace. These pods will be populated as you do your research. The history pod shows the last five searches run and the last five documents viewed. You can also use the full view of history using these links. Either a list view or a graphical research map view. That I will show you more of later. The favorites pod can be populated with your selected search filters and publications. From here, you can add a publication as a filter or browse its table of contents. Work folders can be created and named however you like. You use these folders to store your own saved and annotated copies of Lexis Advanced Documents and you can access your most recently used folders from this pod. We will have a closer look at work folders shortly. The Alerts pod is where you can access and edit any current awareness, cases and publication alerts you have set up. The Notifications pod will be populated if a colleague shares information, such as documents, folders or alerts, with you through the Lexis Advanced Sharing feature. Latest Updates provides access to the latest release notes on our Knowledge Network Learning Resource Centre. The Support Pod links you to tutorial videos, detailed help files and customer support number. The Global Navigation Bar is always here at the top, so that you can access the key features such as search and browse no matter where you are in the application without having to return to the home page. This is very handy when using on a mobile device. In the top corner, you can switch between Lexis Advanced Research and Practical Guidance. The Browse menu gives you access to a comprehensive set of browse options. You can browse by publication or legal topic. If you are on any page other than the home page, the search box will appear here in the center of the bar. History can be accessed here. The More menu provides access to folders, alerts, settings and help. Let's have a closer look at the red search box. The current search scope is always displayed on the button that you click to access pre-search filters. Here you can see that I have not selected any filters yet. So the search scope defaults to everything. If I search now, I will be searching all of my subscribed LexisNexis content. Clicking this button opens the pre-search filters panel. From here, you can apply pre-search filters like jurisdiction, content type and legal topic or access a list of recent and favourite filters and publications. If you are looking for a particular publication, you can also just start typing the publication name into the search box. When the publication appears here in the suggestions drop-down, you have a couple of options. By clicking the publication name, you can add it as a search filter if you want to search just that publication. You can click this link to browse its table of contents. 
From the table of contents, click this star icon to add the publication to your favorites list on the home page. The red search box is the quickest way to search. Let's say I'm looking for the Semenye Jaya decision. If I type in Semenye Jaya, select the word wheel suggestion and hit search. Here is the judgment I am after. For search tasks where you require more precision and want to target specific document sections, such as a judge's name or a word or phrase judicially considered, for example, you can use the advanced search forms. You access the advanced search forms using this link above the red search box. There are four different advanced search forms. Each form searches one of the major content types and features specialized search fields appropriate to that content type. The fields can be used in conjunction with one another to provide a very closely targeted result set. For example, I might search for constitutional law cases heard by the former federal court judge, Gopal Sri Ram. Let's have a look at a broader set of results. For example, I'll search for Forged Transfer. This is the results view. The first thing to notice is that results are organized into high-level content types. This is so that specialized relevance ranking algorithms can be used for each content type to ensure an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of documents. Use these links to switch between results in the various content types. By default, you will start in the Cases results. You can change this Start in Content Type in the Settings menu. The number of results found for each content type is shown next to its name. The snapshot view of results shows the top 5 results from each content type, so you can get a very broad picture of the results if you want. Each content type has its own set of detailed post-search filter options here on the left. From here, you can further refine your search using the Search Within Results box, as well as the post-search filters here. As you select post filters, they appear in blue within this panel. To remove a filter, click on the X next to it. Let's have a look at a document. The Case Citator document for Adona Properties v Bunsen Bunyanit. This document toolbar is always located at the top of the screen and gives quick access to many key functions document navigation, print, email, download, search within document, hit highlighting, and so on. One of the newest features we've added to the case citator document view are these graphical table summaries. These let you filter the table by court, year, judicial treatment, or a combination of these. This delivery toolbar is how you print, email, or download a document or send it to Dropbox. If you highlight text in the document, you will find this pop-up menu allows you to highlight the text and add your own annotations. Once you have added annotations, in order to keep them, you will need to save a copy of the document to a work folder using this Save to Folder icon. Let's do that now. I'll highlight some text, choose Annotate, and add some text. Now I'll save the document to this folder. I am now looking at my personal copy of the document in my own work folder. 
I can access my work folders from anywhere in the application using the Folders option in the More menu. From here, I can manage my folders using all the kinds of options I would in File Management System Add, Delete, Copy, Move, Rename and so on. I can share documents with other people by selecting them with these checkboxes and then clicking this Share button. Documents that others have shared with me appear here in the Shared by Others folder. The last thing we will look at is Research History. History can be accessed from the Global Navigation Bar. This is the list view of history. This list can be filtered and sorted in many ways, just like search results can. The other view of history is the research map. This shows a summarized graphical view of your research, organized into trails of events. Using this view, you can quickly retrace your steps, reconstruct complex paths you took through the application, and jump back into your research anywhere along the trail you like. Events like searches, adding and removing filters, opening documents, and so on are all shown here as icons. And clicking on any icon opens a context-sensitive pop-up menu of options.